In this Allerton Associates Technology Training Tip of the Month, I'll be showing you an overview of Excel's list management tools. Okay, I have Excel up on the screen, and I have a very small list. Lists are often imported from external data sources like bigger databases. They could be created directly in Excel. And this is a really small one because it's only got six columns of information and then 30 rows of, in this case, orders. So each row in a list besides the header row is one unit or one transaction or one item. So in this case, each of my rows is an order. So often you deal with lists like that and often they are much larger, many more columns and possibly thousands or hundreds of thousands of rows of data. I'm keeping mine simple so I don't have to scroll up and down on the screen for you during the demonstration. Often what we'll do too is like what I did here, I manually added a count, actually a count A, to count how many text items are in the product column. I added a sum to sum the units and a sum to sum the sales. You also may have had to do some cleanup of the list if you imported it, like for example, formatting the dates, formatting the sales, perhaps even adding some additional columns that perform calculations. But the main point of the list is that besides the header row, besides totals, you might add every other row is simply one transaction, one item. So we usually have to do something useful with this, like summarize it, see what the highest sale is, see how many times Park sold something, see grand totals, that kind of thing. So what can I do with the list just the way it is? Well, in most cases you're gonna, and you'll see why, turn a list into a table and then possibly create a pivot table from it. The point of this exercise isn't the mechanics of these things, but differentiating between what is a table versus what is a pivot table. Why would I use them on a list? These are things that cause confusion, especially since the two items have very similar names. But let's just start off with the list by itself. What can I do? Well, let's say I want to see what the highest sale is. So up on the data tab, which I already have selected, you have a sort and filter group, and here's a sorting Z to A button for largest to smallest for numbers, and Hmm, the total got sorted. Well, that is something that happens. It's a problem with keeping this as just a plain list. Let me undo that. Now I can go ahead and fix that problem. I can right click row 32 where the total is and insert a new row above it. Now if I click in the sales and sort, it will work. Total stay at the bottom. Okay, so one problem solved. I can also do multiple level sorts, like first by product, then by sales. And anytime you sort, you're just rearranging the data. But sometimes that's all you need. If I need to see the lowest or highest sale, I'll just sort either ascending or descending by sales. There's the lowest sale at the top. Let's take it a step further though. What if I want to see only the sales for a particular product, such as bike? Well, I can click this filter button and it turns filter arrows on the headers of the list. And I'll go ahead and click the product dropdown choose only bike. So I am seeing only bikes and I could even continue to filter further. Like let's say I only want to see bikes in the Northeast region. There's only three of those. Look at the totals though. Regular totals don't change when you hide rows and that's what filtering is doing. So there's another problem with just a regular list with regular calculations. I'm going to go ahead and remove the filter. Now one final useful thing you can do with a list like this is to subtotal it. And this is good for just a one-off subtotal, like if I want to see total per product, this is a way to do it. I would go to a pivot table myself and you're going to see why, especially when you want to do more complex totals such as each salesperson's total per product and maybe per region and for a specific date range. You know, that's getting really complex and that's beyond what subtotals can do or that you want to do with them. If I'm going to add a subtotal, I should remove this total here. I'm just going to go ahead and delete because it's going to do it for me. I'm going to sort first. You always want to sort by what you're subtotaling, so I'll sort by product. I'll go up to subtotal and tell it that for each product I'd like to see a sum. And I can't do that on region, but I can do it on sales and units. And see, check that out. I have to make column B a little wider. But there's my subtotal for bike, there's my subtotal for skateboard. I have these little outline numbers. I can collapse down to the grand total, expand to just the subtotals, expand to see everything. And then I could go ahead if I want and click subtotal and remove that and then subtotal by something else, first by sorting it, then by applying the subtotal. I'm going to come over to table, which is my same list, total still there because I had just copied it. I'm going to get rid of that total again. And I'm going to turn this into a table and you'll see multiple benefits right away over what I did with just the list. So usually when you take a list, you will immediately turn it into a table for this reason. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go up to home, format as table. You get all kinds of formats. You can change them later if you don't like what you pick, but I'm just going to pick this one. Table does have headers. There we go. Right away, formatting, alternate row formatting, 
found through hundreds of thousands of rows if that's how big my list was. Automatically, I have filter sort arrows. I don't have to go to the data tab, though I could to get at them. I mean, I could still use these options, but I don't have to. It's built in. On the table ribbon that I have now that it's a table, I can add a total row. This is a much better total row. First of all, it's easy to set up. I can just pick my calculation. There's my count. Here's my sum of units. Here's my sum of sales. All right, you know what? It's counting over here, too. I'm going to get rid of that. All right, so I'm going to sort by product now. Actually, let me sort by sales. So I'm going to sort by sales. Note the sort orders are right at the top there, largest to smallest. And see how the total row stayed at the bottom? Because it's a table. Here, I'll sort by product, A to Z. Okay, so the table's resorted. The total stays at the bottom. How about filtering? What if I just want to see snowboards? Now check the total row out. It worked. And that's because the totals use the subtotal calculation. I didn't have to know that, though. I just threw it on there. And I can further filter, like, snowboards for just park. Now, again, I'm just filtering with exact values. You can do things like greater than, less than, stuff like that. I'm not getting into that here. But you can do pretty complex filters. And again, on a table, not only is it more automated, but the total row is accurate. Okay? So that's the idea of a table. I'm just going to come up to the data tab and use this clear button because that'll easily clear all the filters. And, you know, you can still use these options. It's just that you don't have to for everything. So one thing, though, about what I just did, you are still just seeing individual totals. If I only display Murray sales, yes, I'm seeing Murray's total, eight sales and, and these totals. But what if I want to see just one total? Like, not all these individual Murray sales. This is the thing. Lists and tables show each individual item. So that's what differentiates this from the pivot table that I will create from it. A pivot table is for summarizing. So let's say I want to see the total per salesperson. Imagine what I'd have to do here. I'd have to either apply subtotals, but look, I can't. Microsoft doesn't let you do subtotals on a table because they know you're going to do a pivot table. They expect you to do a pivot table, not use the more antiquated subtotal feature. But for now, I'd have to individually filter for each salesperson, see that person's individual sales, and look at the total. But here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm in the table. I'm going to go to Insert and Pivot Table and insert a pivot table. It's going to go on this table. Note the table has a name. I'm going to let it go on a new worksheet. That new sheet goes to the left of the one I was on. So this pivot table is based on the data in that table. I'm going to go ahead and add Salesperson, Product, and Sales. And check that out. With three clicks now, I'm seeing each salesperson's sum of sales. I can change that calculation and then broken out by product for that salesperson. It's a pivot table because I can easily rearrange this. So I'm going to take product here and move it into the columns and look what happened. So again, keep in mind what this is. This is the summary of the data from the table. You know, this Murray skateboard number is the total Murray skateboards. There could be two, three, four, five, six records in this table for that. Murray might have 10 different sales for skateboard, but here I'm seeing the grand total. That's something the table doesn't do, but the pivot table does. So that's the big distinction, is that the table is still the individual orders, but gives you the automation of the formatting, the totals, the filtering, the sorting to work with a list. Then you create one or more pivot tables to summarize the data. And by the way, I'm summing here. I can change that. Here, I'll go up to field settings since I'm on the sum field, and I'll count. So see, now you can see that Murray skateboard sum had been the total of five different sales. And if I change that back to sum, notice the other calculations available. With just a few clicks, I'm seeing summaries, including grand totals for the list. So that's the basic rundown of working with a list. You start with a plain list, and you can do things to it. I could have based that pivot table directly on the list. But really, you want to turn any list into a table for all the additional automation it affords. And then if you want summaries from that table, you create a pivot table attached to it. I can even create a chart from this pivot table that will change and pivot along with it. For more information about our classes, please visit us at www.ellertraining.com.